Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends uh, we were discussing about severe plastic deformation okay so we will discuss couple of more processes where uh, you can use this idea of severe plastic deformation okay in that series and uh, now today we will discuss about uh, one of the process called accumulative roll bonding okay again the all this uh, spd processes are very uh, simple to implement okay and the good thing about these processes are that you can use existing uh, facilities okay which are usually available in the labs uh, for example this is based on rolling process so already if rolling mill is there you can easily adopt uh, uh, an spd process like this uh, using your rolling mill okay so what what do we mean by this accumulative roll bonding okay so accumulation means you are continuously accumulating okay already i have Uh, told you uh, that whenever we during conventional rolling whenever we do rolling okay we are reducing the cross sectional area and of course the length will increase usually there is not uh, uh, much deformation in the width direction so the deformation is only the thickness will be reduced and because volume constancy has to be there the length will increase and slowly the uh, the thickness will keep on reducing and it will become uh, uh, the sheet will become very thin okay so for any structural application i need a certain thickness also to take the load okay so if you i want to impose more strain okay the another way is that you do this kind of deformation okay and you can then do the stacking okay so as we said that length will increase so i can cut the sheet now and again put the one sheet over the another sheet okay and then again do the same uh, rolling process okay so on the issue which can arise here is that what will be the strength of bonding between the two sheets okay because the the integrity of the sheet will depend on that what is the kind of bond which is forming between the two sheets okay usually we know that very quickly some oxide layers uh, uh, form on the surface okay so, and also during the rolling process there may be some uh, lubricant which will be on the on the rolls okay so you have to have a very good preparation of the surface whenever you are doing the stacking sequence okay uh, first kind of uh, do some mechanical uh, removal of the material okay uh, also basically you want to increase the roughness of the sheet okay so that it can create more uh, area for the bonding as well as uh, there will be cleaning processes okay so uh, it has its share of complexities in terms of the sample preparation or in terms of surface preparation okay so it is like conventional bonding is repeated continuously uh however uh, when we are selecting the temperature the temperature of the rolling should be below the recrystallization temperature okay uh, because the recrystallization temperature will uh, re relieve the the accumulated strain okay if there is any recrystallization during the first rolling uh, process then there won't be any accumulation of the strain in the material okay Uh, so recrystallization has to be avoided so usually the accumulative roll bonding we do at uh, temperature lower than the recrystallization temperature for that material and uh, idea is to uh, impose very high strain in the in the material okay through this uh, uh, process okay and we kind of because we are continuously repeating it we are think, saying that there is not going to be much change in the geometrical Uh, property of, of the material geometry will more or less remain same after each cycle and uh, one of the microstructural feature of arb will be like it the microstructure will not be equixed 
okay already we have seen in ecap uh, if you used bc root okay then uh, after uh, the complete cycle the microstructure which was uh, which was achieved was having a equixed microstructure or equixed grains in three dimension okay but this is a rolling process and you are continuously rolling in one direction okay so the the grains or the microstructure will not be or grains will not be equixed here but it will more like a pancake shape okay pancake you can it is like pizza okay so it will be like a shape of a pizza so if you cut in in uh, in the direction of the normal to that uh, pizza surface okay then the grains will look elongated in this direction as well as uh, perpendicular to rolling direction okay whereas if you look from the top it will be looking like a equixed structure okay so this is a typical pancake shape that from one direction <coughs> the grain will be equixed but but from other two directions the grain will look elongated so the procedure already as i told you that surface of the true strips are treated okay and then you place it on one over another in each cycle the typically the reduction which we uh, want to achieve is more than 50% okay so 50% reduction in thickness will be there okay and that is to attain sufficient bonding so bonding between the two layer will be through the the strain okay through the through the deformation okay so through the flow of material okay and they are going to kind of uh, have a they will create a bond and every time as i told you that the length will increase so you can section into two halves put it back over one another and again do the deformation process at a temperature lower than uh, recrystallization temperature and with reduction more than 50% okay so this is a schematic diagram of the process okay so these were the two sheets okay we which you have cleaned did wire brushing and so on okay so actually we'll start from here we you have done a rolling of the sheet okay so thickness has increased and the uh, thickness has reduced length has increased then you have cut the sheet into two halves okay and then you have cleaned the sheet okay surface treatment and then again is taking and then again it will be repeated so this whole cycle will be repeated okay uh, every time and in each case uh, uh, the thickness will be dependent on the amount of uh, or the number of cycles which you are putting so we are already considering here that we are doing 50% reduction okay so it will be dependent on the number of cycle okay so if you have done 10 cycle you can easily calculate what will be the thickness of the uh, of the sheet okay and where t not is the initial thickness okay and this is the relationship for the uh, strain in the material okay which will also depend on the number of cycles okay and again uh, uh, the the relationship is assuming that you are giving 50% reduction every time okay if it is not so then you have to change this particular uh, value okay half is taken from the idea that you are giving it 50% reduction in the thickness okay so simply if you th these are all constant if you do the mathematics here ultimately you will get an expression like this said that epsilon will be dependent on number of cycle multiplied by 0.8 okay so assuming if it is 50% if you have uh, you are putting 60% you have to change the relationship accordingly okay now as i told you that you are doing deformation and through deformation the bonding is taking place okay so there is a very uh, strong role of shear strain in, uh, in in the bonding as well as grain refinement in aluminum or in any material okay so and usually you this uh, particular technique is done without use of lubricant okay so that you can have good roll bonding what by avoiding lubricant what you are doing is you are uh, uh, introducing lot of shear strain on the surface of the sheet which is coming in contact of the roll and also there is a shear strain between the the two layers okay so at that that interface also there is large shear strain is acting okay as well as on the surface of the 
sheets okay which is coming in contact of the roll and this shear strain actually uh, kind of achieves uh, the reduction in the grain size okay so there is a strong relationship between the shear strain so for example this shows a shear strain uh, diagram here uh, 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 a graph here okay so the shear strain is more where you have second interface in the second cycle okay again the shear strain is increasing where you have the third cycle between the two bond two, two interfaces okay and wherever the shear strain is high okay you can see the thickness of grain okay so they have measured not the grain size the what is because you are continuously flattening the grains here through rolling process so what is the thickness of the grain that is showing a sharp dip okay wherever the shear strain is very high okay so and continue uh, again when the next shear strain cycle is there again there is a dip okay so there there is a and uh, this is effect of the uh, distance from the surface so only on the surfaces you will have high amount of shear strain and there you will have very small thickness of the grain as you go away from the surface okay where the shear, shear strain effect will be small again the thickness of the grain is increasing again there is a dip wherever the shear strain close to the surface is high okay so shear strain is being uh, applied both through contact between the roll and the sheet okay which becomes the interface when you cut it and again stake it over one another and there is also shear strain between the layers okay this is a, a, a an example of uh, grain refinement in magnesium alloys i am just kind of giving you uh, is, is a kind of a very brief overview of use of this particular technique in different materials okay so after uh, uh, these are comparison between two magnesium alloys here so az31 and az91 okay so az31 has 3% aluminum whereas as at 91 has 9% aluminum so aluminum content is increasing okay zinc content is same in both the case which is 1% and you can clearly see the effect of the alloying content on the uh, on the microstructure okay this is after first pass okay and in this direction your strain is increasing okay so this is after fourth pass and in this direction your aluminum content is increasing okay and again this is your uh, strain is increasing because this fourth pass this first pass and you can see clearly the effect of the uh, strain on the microstructure okay the refinement is increasing and you can very clearly see the effect of aluminum content also that as you are increasing the aluminum content okay the microstructure refinement is more you can see that refinement in this case is more here okay in fact you are not able to even resolve the microstructure whereas here i can see clearly the grains however the, there is more heterogeneity here you can see there are some big grains are there okay and some very fine grain microstructure is there okay so there is a heterogeneity with more refinement okay the reason maybe is because as aluminum is increasing there will be more number of precipitates will be there and this precipitate pin the grain boundaries okay so when you have recrystallization process uh, the recrystallization process uh, have nucleation and and the uh, growth process so movement of uh, grain boundary is required so if grain boundary is pinned then it cannot grow okay so the the grain size which you will achieve will be very fine okay and if 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 there is any maybe heterogeneous distribution of precipitate maybe that is why you are getting heterogeneous microstructure here okay now you can also interestingly with this uh, particular process you can create multi layers okay so suppose you want to do a solid state uh, or what we call as mechanical alloying okay so one alloying technique is that you take everything into liquid phase okay and then do the uh, through phase transformation you create the alloy okay but in that uh, the the amount of one material can go in another material depends upon the the free energy or the basically phase diagram phase diagram decides that how much uh, so material will go into solid solution and so on okay so if you want to create uh, have material where you want to introduce have more 
content of one alloying element into another one way is to do mechanical alloying and or you can also create multi layers ok. So, you can have kind of composite structure uh, of metals both can be metals ok and have multi layers of uh, uh, one alloy and another alloy ok. And uh, the bonding between the two material will create this multi layer ok. So, this is an example of uh, cre uh, preparation of a multi layer aluminum nickel composite here. So, the dark one this one is aluminum ok, I am sorry this one is aluminum ok and this one is the dark one is nickel ok. So, this is aluminum this is nickel ok, nickel is harder compared to aluminum ok. Uh, so, aluminum is able to flow whereas, nickel is showing the necking phenomena ok, uh, you, you can see a very nice necking is forming here ok here already necking has taken place and uh, there, there, there is now aluminum is, uh, is continuous here now ok. So, nickel is divided into two parts where it where in this case it is in due in the process of that necking. So, necking and fracture of nickel layer takes place ok and this nickel layer is actually cut by this shear bands ok and usually these shear bands are at 45 degree to the rolling direction. So, the fracturing takes place through this shear band uh, uh, formation ok and which is at 45 degree uh, direction to the rolling ok. And the, the, the heterogeneous distribution as we have already seen uh, earlier also that there is a large shear strain uh, heterogeneity in the material ok, uh, which is due to friction between roll and uh, sample surfaces ok. So, this create uh, a very large strain wherever the interfaces are there ok and that is what is, is causing this shear bends and fracturing of nickel layer ok. So, this is how you can create a uh, uh, aluminum nickel multi layer composites ok. This is another example of aluminum copper sandwich structure through ARB ok. So, initially this is the primary sandwich. So, uh, this light one is the copper and dark one is aluminum ok. This is a SEM micrograph. So, uh, you will have more uh, uh, contra in contrast uh, the copper should look bright and aluminum should look dark ok. Uh, whereas, earlier one was an optical micrograph and uh, again you can see the effect of uh, copper being harder phase ok. So, it is getting broken down ok and slowly slowly you can see it is almost uh, getting refined to very uh, very small sizes ok and uh, having a kind of a continuous distribution throughout the aluminum matrix ok. And again the same necking and uh, fracturing is taking place in copper at different places. So, you can see that necking is there ok, necking has started here almost about to complete here ok and there is kind of break in the copper layer ok. Here also you can see after first cycle itself there is a break in the copper layer and the effect of this uh, composite uh, if you can see on the strength. So, for pure copper uh, the strength is around 240 mega Pascal and for pure aluminum the strength is around around 70 or 80 mega Pascal ok. Uh, aluminum if you just do uh, accumulated roll bonding in aluminum ok, the strength increases to 300 mega Pascal. So, from here it can go up to here ok. For aluminum copper composite the strength is even higher ok, you can see that now the strength is around 360 mega Pascal. So, again there is an increase from 300 mega Pascal if you just compare with ARB in pure aluminum to ARB with aluminum and copper composite ok. However, the total elongation is continuously decreasing, decreasing in this all cases ok, though there is a increase in the strength which is a usual uh, phenomena in all the SPD processes uh, we have seen that ok. So, here also by ha having a composite like this you can achieve higher strength in the uh, aluminum copper uh, composite structure. So, again coming back to the same uh, uh, our story ok, where we are saying that the severe plastic deformation processes uh, actually uh, though they increase the strength ok, the 
ductility is is reduced. Uh, so, in this case also ARB case also uh, as number of cycles are increasing ok, the though the strength is increasing ok, but the ductility of the material is going down ok. So, this, this is this, this result is in IF steel which is called interstitial free steel ok, that means you have removed all the alloying element from the interstitial sides ok. So, it is usually very very, very soft material you can see that at at no no without ARB ok, in normal condition the strength is may be around 250 mega Pascal ok, but with ARB you can uh, increase it to 800 mega Pascal, but at the cost of uh, reduction in elongation from around 60 percent to very low may, may be around 5 percent or so after 7 number of cycles ok. So, this is the usual story uh, getting repeated in all SPD processes that though the grain refinement uh, achieve very high strength in the material ok, but uh, the, the ductility comes uh, sharply uh, with the introduction of strain in the material ok. Now, as already we have seen that uh, this is also a very good technique to create composite where the uh, other uh, um, part is uh, may be ceramic particles for example, in this case silicon carbide particles are there ok. So, again when you are doing a stacking you can uh, uh, put the silicon carbide particle between two layers ok. So, they will get embedded uh, in the in the matrix ok. So, this is of course, the first, the first one ok. Then you have second one is still the the um, you can we very clearly see the effect of the stacking ok. They are uh, in one uh, all the silicon carbide particles are in one line ok. By fifth pass they are uh, getting distributed because as we already know that there are lot of shear strains acting uh, at the interfaces ok. So, the distribution and the breaking of uh, this uh, linear arrangement starts ok. By 8 cycle it is almost uniformly distributed throughout the matrix ok. So, a very nice method to in, uh, to make uh, composite of uh, some, uh, some ceramic particle in, in the metal matrix ok. So, the material is aluminum 050 and of course, silicon carbide is put in this ok. So, this ARB process can be also used for making easily you can make a composite uh, of this kind ok. So, all these processes have lot of flexibility ok, you can create different type of uh, uh, materials uh, metal metal uh, composite, metal ceramic composites ok. Also by introducing in the same material multiple times we are able to achieve very high strain and very uh, fine grain microstructure ok, which increases the strength of course, with at the cost of ductility ok. So, that balancing has to be done through microstructural con uh, control and that is where the your uh, uh, knowledge of metallurgy comes handy that how you can do that to so, as we have already discussed there are couple of approaches to increase the ductility one is creation of bimodal structure ok or uh, th through uh, 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 that was another approach was there ok. So, my bimodal structure and these approaches are based on your metallurgical knowledge ok. So, that can be used for creating a uh, material with uh, good ductility also. Thank you.